The study of human behavior has undergone a revolution in the past 20 years. Neuroscientists are building a picture of how the brain has become adapted for thought and investigating why it evolved the way that it did. What if we bring these perspectives to bear on the question of music? If music has lasted so long in our species, what are the evolutionary forces driving its forms and its uses? The world in six songs is the story of how music has changed the course of human civilization and its primacy in shaping human nature. From our brain stem to the prefrontal cortex, from the limbic system to the cerebellum, music uniquely insinuates itself into our heads, and I believe that it does so in six ways, each of them with its own evolutionary basis. Friendship. When Joshua fought the Battle of Jericho, it wasn't the melody that made the walls come tumbling down. Scholars tell us it was the rhythms of the Hebrew Army Drum Corps. Throughout time, humans who sang, danced, and marched may have enjoyed a strong advantage on the battlefield. When we sing and dance, our neurons fire in time with the music and movements. When we sing and dance with each other, our brains literally synchronize. This synchrony could be used for bad or for good. It created bonds between early humans, allowing for the formation of larger living groups and eventually of society as we know it. Synchronized song and movement made collective tasks easier to undertake, while frictions within a group could be smoothed out through music dance, which engendered strong feelings of sympathy and affection, the foundations of civic life. Meanwhile, music has always been a force binding like-minded people together. When I was young, the Vietnam War prompted countless protest songs like this one. All we are saying is give peace a chance. All we are saying is give peace a chance. All we are saying is give peace a chance. So music and coordinated movement create meaningful social bonds, in waging war, forming work crews, building societies, and bringing cohesion to the great emotional currents in our lives. Where would civilization be without song? Joy. Fundamental to the experience of early humans was the expression of joy through music dance. Music affects our health in essential ways. Playing music can modulate levels of dopamine, the so-called feel-good hormone in the brain, elevating mood, boosting the immune system, and altering the brain chemistry associated with well-being and stress reduction. Music also gives the brain important opportunities for exercise and play. For example, the tension in music motivates our imaginations. Can you guess what note comes next in this sequence? Excellent. <laughs> I'm not so sure this would have worked if I tried it at UCLA, but... <laughs> Resolving tension by imagining and predicting through music, as you just did, is great practice for the sort of abstract thinking about the world that finding food and shelter and mates and escaping danger requires. Music actually provokes survival. Sometimes you feel like an Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you 
feel like a <laughs> By broadcasting our positive emotional states, we were better equipped to form societies and cooperative groups. Sometimes you don't. Comfort. The lullaby is the classic song of comfort. The slow, steady rhythms of lullabies stabilize respiration and heart rate. They lower the pulse, mutually calming mother and child. We don't lose our need for comfort just because we grow up. Music continues to soothe us throughout our lives, often when we feel disenfranchised or disaffected. The implicit message of comfort songs is, you're not alone. Other people have also felt these things, and they've come out all right. When we're sad, our brain releases prolactin, a tranquilizing hormone that is also released after orgasm, birth, and during lactation. Sad music can catalyze this process and console us with feelings of connection and understanding. After the attacks of September 11, 2001, radio and television stations and many public places began to pipe music. And what did they play? A song that spontaneously became our de facto national anthem. A simple melody that united the country in a way that was both comforting and brought strength. A song written, incidentally, by an immigrant. A song that crossed all divides. Knowledge. The ancient Hebrews set the entire Torah to melody. Like other sung epics from pre literate societies, it transmits a knowledge that binds family history, moral lessons, political history, and codes of conduct. And why was it sung and not merely spoken? The mutually reinforcing cues of rhythm, rhyme, accent structure, and melody provide a powerful mnemonic for encoding knowledge. Today, songwriters know that setting something to music is the best guarantee it will be remembered. Some knowledge songs ask the listener to remember something important. Others are for the singer him or herself. Take Johnny Cash's most famous song. I find it very, very easy to be true. I find myself alone when each day is through. Yes, I admit that I'm a fool for you. Because you're mine, I walk the line. Now, on the surface, it seems like a sweet love song, right? But in the third verse, Cash explicitly invokes memory as he pledges to think of his sweetheart. As sure as night is dark and day is light, I keep you on my mind both day and night. And happiness I've known proves that it's right. Because you're mine, I want I don't think Cash is singing the song to her. I think he's singing it to himself. The irony is he doesn't find it very, very easy to be true. It's a struggle. The song's function is to remind him why he's doing this, because of the happiness he's known, that he doesn't want to risk. I Walk the Line is a knowledge song, a musical string around the singer's finger to remind him that when each day is through, he's promised himself certain things he would do. Knowledge songs are a special instance of art that seeks to inform, and their use of metaphor and mnemonic device raises their messages up to the level at which art meets science. Perhaps knowledge songs are the crowning triumph 
of culture and mind, encoding, uh, encoding important life lessons in an artistic form that is ideally adapted to the structure and function of the human brain. We need to know and we need to sing about it. Because you're mine, I walk the line. Religion. Some of the most beautiful music ever written has been songs of religion, songs of praise to God. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. Ooh. Anthropologists tell us that all human societies look for God. And these same societies are built upon belief in things that are not readily apparent. Things like abstract notions of justice and cooperation. Religions train us to accept society-building propositions based on trust and to feel good about doing so. And ceremonies with music help to reaffirm those propositions. Most rituals involve repetitive movements. Music exerts its power here to encode the proper conduct of the movements, evoking a religious experience intensely emotional, the effects of which can last a lifetime. We're all descended from ancestors who kept mating rituals, wedding ceremonies, and funeral rites with song. We continue the chain of ceremony and ritual, binding our collective pasts to our personal future. Such rituals elevate us from the mundane to consider our role in the world and the future of the world. Music unites our reptilian brain with our primate and human brain, binding our thoughts to movement, memory, hopes, and desires. Love. Neurochemical changes occur during the first few months of a relationship. Huge releases of oxytocin and feel-good hormones take place at such high levels they induce clinically verifiable altered states of consciousness. I just Ancient Greeks identified four distinct kinds of love, not just the romantic love of Hollywood and love songs. As inspiring as they can be, of course, I think it was another type of love that brought together music and the creation of human nature. The sweeping selfless love we feel when we commit to another person, to a group, or to an idea. Self-sacrifice and putting the good of the community before our individual good. That's the type of love that transformed humans from bands of nomads to the creators of cities with libraries, schools, courthouses, and ways to care for the needy. Music may have evolved then not for one reason, but for several distinct reasons. Keeping you and your loved one's thoughts when you're not around, for comfort, friendship, ritual, and religion, to express joy, and to convey knowledge. But for reasons we're just beginning to understand as neuroscientists, music brings us outside ourselves, puts us in touch with thoughts of a higher power or higher order. It inspires us to achieve loftier goals than just those that are in our own self-interest. existence that is the highest love of all, the love of humanity with all our flaws and destructiveness, a love of the goodness that we sometimes show in extreme difficulty, of loving those whom others might find unlovable, of being honest when there is nothing to gain, the love of the heroism of doing the right thing even when no one can see us doing it.
It is all this and our capacity to write about it and celebrate it in song that makes us human. Thank you.